here. I think we're good. It's four minutes after. All right. So I would like to introduce, um, welcome everyone to um, Social Justice Week 2021. Um, the SSU student Shelby Wade created Sonoma State's Social Justice Week and it was launched in 2015. The goal was to provide a space for not only Sonoma State student body, but for the community as well, and to contribute ideas, gain perspective, and get an understanding of current social issues. Its mission is to create, excuse me, its mission is to connect students with advocates who help students develop a theoretical understanding of whose land SSU sits upon, the power of grassroots activism for human betterment, social change, while raising students and community awareness and engage with issues in, embedded in societal social structures of inequality, colonialism, imperialism, classism, ableism, sexism, patriarchy, patriarchy heterosexism, queerphobia, transphobia, xenophobia, and religious and other discrimination. Involve students in social justice issues and organizations which produces socially responsible students educated to be effective personally and social change agents in the pursuit of justice. Community engagement, collaborative partnership that strengthens communities, provides services and prepares students and contributes to equitable distribution of economic, political, civil, culture, social, and other resources and opportunities in society in order to promote personal, campus, and community opportunities. Um, I would like to go ahead and um, pass the baton over to Isel Caballero, who will be our facilitator, and he will um, discuss uh, the land acknowledgement here at uh, Sonoma State University. Hello everyone, my name is Isabel Caballero. Um, long before California in Sonoma County and Sonoma State University, the land around us was inhabited by indigenous people collectively known as the Coast, Miwok, and Southern Pomo. They are formally recognized as the Federated Indians of Great Brayton Rancheria and carried by Greg Saris, who also holds the Brayton Rancheria Endowed Chair at SSU. Sonoma State acknowledges in gratitude the Rancheria's ancestors for their stewardship of the land and all of its resources and thank the current members for their partnership in a number of educational initiatives, including the Federated Indians of Granton Interior Learning Center at the Fairfield Osborne Preserve located on Sonoma Mountain. As Professor Saris writes in his 2017 book, How a Mountain Was Made, quote, it is said that Coyote was sitting on top, atop Sonoma Mountain when he decided to create the world and people, but that is part of being uh, the big story of the mountain, end quote. We are now all part of the big story of the mountain and our stewardship of its resources, including our county and our university. It is an ongoing virtual responsibility we recognize and gladly accept to learn more about uh, Native American initiatives at Sonoma, Sonoma State University. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Izel, for um, sharing that information. My name is Jaden Clausen, and uh, this is my first semester at Sonoma State. Um, I am a junior, and I am pursuing a, um, a major in uh, sociology uh, for a bachelor's degree. I recently received my associates this last fall in sociology. So I'm excited to be here at Sonoma State and loving it. 
Um, so I'll be your host uh, for this presentation uh, with um, our, our guest speaker, which I'll, I'll introduce here in just a moment. Um, but I would like to introduce our facilitator, and that is um, our social justice facilitator for this session is Isel Caballero. And he's a second year student here at um, SSU and his degree that he's um, studying for is criminology. Did I get that right, Isel? <laughs> okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Um, and he will be running the technology, organizing your questions uh, for the speaker, keeping time and enforcing any ground rules, which uh, you can see listed in the blue box um, in, the, in the top corner here. Um, he will also be running the chat behind the scenes in the tech today, and I will be doing um, a majority of the speaking um, outside of or assisting the speaker here. If you have any questions about the Zoom interface, please feel free to, to speak up um, and ask any questions now. But I think a lot of you are probably familiar with these sessions. Um, so without further ado, I would like to go ahead and uh, introduce our speaker, um, Rima um, Macarin. Did I did I destroy that? A little bit. Can you help um, me? It's Makar Yan. So Makar Yan. Makar Yan. There you go. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Um, our speaker's our speaker's bio is quite uh, quite extraordinary. Um, uh, Rima is the founder of the Monarch Project. Uh, a lot of projects that they're uh, that they're coordinating and, and spearheading are youth run at the arts based organization. And the idea that they're um, what they're promoting is social justice issues, specifically targeting immigration. They're using arts to change the narrative around this topic, and their ultimate goal is to bring people together to offer opportunities for volunteers to interact and talk about these issues in a, a non political humanistic way. And they have a lot of different kind of opportunities for volunteers to come in and be involved. And we'll talk, and she'll talk about those here during the presentation. Um, and we'll give some different links of how you can um, find those opportunities. But they are doing some amazing, um, amazing change with their programs. And their aim is to um, humanize and support the immigrants in our community by telling their story through art and raising awareness about the injustices that they face. So without further ado, uh, Rima, I'll let you go ahead and uh, take the stage. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, thank you to you know everyone who invited me here. I'm happy to have this platform and to speak to everyone. Um, so as Jaden introduced me, my name is Rima Makaryan. Um, I'm from Sonoma County, originally from Armenia, which is this tiny country in the Middle East. Um, so I'm an immigrant. I am currently a freshman in college. Um, and I started this kind of this project about, you know, I think two or three years ago when I was a junior in high school um, through this one specific mural project. And I will talk about that and has taken me on a very interesting journey through the public art world. Um, and I want to kind of, my goal today is to kind of reframe the issue of immigration in a unique way. Um, and, you know, I'll start sharing my screen and we can go ahead and start. And you guys can interrupt me at any point. Um, you know, we have, we have a small group, which is great, which means we can discuss and, um, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts and everything. So don't hesitate. Um, so we'll be talking about immigration and migration through art. And this is the image that I have here on the right is kind of one of the most famous art pieces that talk about immigration. And this is by Faviana Rodriguez and um, it's called Migration is Beautiful. So before I go into kind of my project and what I've done, I wanna give you guys a brief history of immigration. I'm sure many of you are already very familiar. Um, but I mean, let's start with the pre-colonial Americas. As you can see, borders are very different if they exist at all. Um, you know, there's so many diverse cultures all kind of coexisting mixed together. 
um, with very different borders and divisions across the United States. And this is, you know, what it was like before we had the introduction of Columbus and kind of the carving out of the Americas and turning it into um, close to what we have today. Um, so I think this is a part of history that's often forgotten in the US when we talk about immigration and, you know, ultimately we are all immigrants or settlers. There are some differences there, but um, this land didn't belong to any of us unless you are a Native American. Um, and then of course we have, you know, the early settlers carving out the United States, reforming it, um, exploiting it, turning it into what we recognize today. Um, after the settlers, we had huge immigration rooms um, coming into the United States, all kinds of people pouring in. Um, and at this point, of course, immigration was, you know, greatly encouraged and almost everyone was welcome along with kind of the bringing in of slaves, um, which isn't immigration, but it just comes to show all the different ways that people have come to the United States and all the different ways that we have filled um, these continents. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit to the Immigration Act of 1924. And I think this marks a turning point um, when it comes to immigration and the perception of immigrants. It was one of the first kind of restrictions and um, it, it showed the ways in which Americans always want, not Americans, but people in general always want someone to point fingers at, someone to leave out, someone to exclude. Um, and at this point, it wasn't even you know people of color or other kinds of immigrants, but it was just different parts of Europe that didn't seem to fill into the exact um, kind of racial composition that people wanted to preserve in the United States. So there were all of these quotas based on the number of, you know, the types of people that were in the United States in 1980, 19, or sorry, 1870, 1890, um, when it was mostly Northern Europeans instead of South Europeans. Um, so I think today we might kind of group all of Europe into one. Um, and immigration is mostly encouraged from all of Europe today in, in the United States. But at some point in history, um, the US decided to exclude even different types of Europeans. So we have this kind of history of saying who we want and who we don't want in this country um, and kind of coming up with these arbitrary quotas based on what we think is the ideal racial composition of our country. Um, of course, we have exclusion against Chinese and Japanese Americans. Um, and you know, the history of you know, excluding people who look different from us, who have different histories from us. Um, I'm gonna jump again a little bit forward to the support of Mexican laborers in the United States. Um, you know, the rhetoric today is that we wanna leave Mexicans out. We wanna leave coming, people who are coming in from the South um, away from the United States as much as possible. But at some point we welcomed Mexican labor into the country. Um, we encouraged it and we came up with visas and all kinds of programs to bring people in to boost our economy. Um, jump forward again, I'm just touching on to things that are most relevant to what I'm gonna talk about. Um, and then we have the era of deportations and kind of the more modern situation around immigration and what that's like. And, um, you know, I think Obama has a reputation and he's treated as like the savior at some points, you know, he's, he's regarded to be very liberal and all of that. But um, Obama was responsible for some of like the highest numbers of immigration in our country and its history. Um, so I just want to point that out. And that's when we have the kind of the emergence of ICE, which is a fairly new organization altogether um, with the mission of deporting people. A distinction that I really want to make is that in the Obama era deportations, the focus wasn't really on just individuals. It was mostly on criminal deportations. So, the, so that is, I think, important to note. Um, and it wasn't really so much focused on separating families and all the things that we have going on today. Um, and Obama, despite you know being responsible for so many deportations, did kind of introduce DACA and also DAPA, which is kind of like its sister program. Um, and this was designed to help who we would call dreamers. So young individuals who had been brought to the country um, by their parents. And I think this was an easy, um, an easy bill to sell because I think, you know, children are relatively uncontroversial and, you know, innocent. And most people would want them, you know, to give them a better future. So DACA was instated um, until of course we had the introduction of the Donald Trump era um, and DACA was suspended. And this is actually the point in which the Monarch Project really started to form. 
um, you know, when I found out about this, you know, in high school, I realized that, you know, as an immigrant myself who had come here leg legally under very similar circumstances, um, there was very little difference between my story and people who had come from other places, but I just had the papers, so I was lucky and I didn't have to live in that same kind of fear. So DACA was what really sparked the foundation of, you know, everything that I'm going to tell you guys about right now. Um, and I think it also was the point in which most Americans started paying attention a little bit more to immigration and the issue in general. Um, because, you know, the people who were being targeted were just young individuals who were, you know, getting an education, who were working, and all of, and all of that. Um, and then, you know, I talked about the innocence of children and how usually we want to protect them, um, but we have child separation at the border, which continued to take place. Um, and what we have with these three images in just this era is the, the dehumanization of immigrants. Um, and the rhetoric that we're starting to tell, the stories that we're trying to put together, um, and the way that immigrants are depicted overall and treated. And that brings me to my next piece. So as an artist, um, you know, I, I view the world in, I guess, not so much by statistics, but kind of, I guess, the vibe or um, the, way, the way that it makes people feel um, or the general perception or the way that people are going to understand these issues and how it's going to affect them emotionally. And a really big way that humans can be manipulated emotionally or just you know, subconsciously thought to believe different things are through language. And um, this is just like a short list of you know, the ways that immigrants were talked about, just the general rhetoric surrounding immigration. So we have infest, thugs, infiltrate, killers, um, crime infested breeding, pour into our country. And then, you know, we refer to people as illegals, or I think the official language, um, you know, in US, just in US government, and when you apply for immigration is actually legal aliens. Um, so we have all of these words that just completely strip people of their humanity. And they're just kind of reduced to a very small part of their identity. Um, and another thing that this language does is it kind of creates a monolith around who the immigrant is. Um, at this point, immigrants were mostly seen as people who were coming from Latin America with a very specific kind of image. But um, what was done is that they ignored the huge diversity that we have in immigration, even today. Um, and so when you get to say that all immigrants are the same, it is a lot easier to target them and say that, okay, I can point my finger to this specific person and this specific person is evil for X, Y, Z reasons. Um, so this kind of the creating, the creation of monoliths and the depiction of immigration as mo of immigrants as monoliths was also a huge part of the way that people might be persuaded um, subconsciously into believing X, Y, Z. So the next piece that I wanna talk about, which is you know also hugely ignored is the ties of, let me see if I, I'm gonna to go to this slide before. Um, kind of the way that we talk about immigration is mostly about humans. And I think if you just take out those first two letters, I am, we have migration. Um, and I think oftentimes people kind of take out the natural part of humans moving around. Um, you know, we have traveled across continents for centuries. This isn't new. It's not the first time that people are changing where they live, traveling to different places for, you know, uh, better or for worse, obviously, animals have been doing it forever. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we chose monarchs to be our symbol, um, because of the journey that they make and because animals are oftentimes seen to be completely unpolitical, um, except when we're talking about climate change and all of that. But um, I think it puts into context the way that we can frame an issue. So from something highly political to people coming and stealing our jobs to a simple human experience, um, you know, a simple human, almost a part of our nature or just, you know, the way that humans are going to behave in their lifetime. Um, another connection to kind of nature and ecology and the natural world, which is again, just completely free of politics is climate change. Um, one of the reasons why we have, you know, increases in climate change and we're gonna, not the climate change, excuse me, increases in, you know, migration, immigration, is the fact that we are, you know, destroying places 
that were once habitable or places that were once favorable to be lived in and they're no longer going to be able to support their people. Um, and the ironic part here is that the, big, the biggest contributors to climate change aren't going to see the same consequences as people who have not really contributed to you know, global warming and all of that. Um, but what happens is we have you know, places that used to support huge communities going through all kinds of natural disasters and increasing frequency and all of that. Um, there is a link, sorry, a link um, to a really cool article. You guys can put that in the, um, in the chat. You can check that out whenever you have the chance. Um, and this is an issue that's, I think, oftentimes completely overlooked um, when it comes to immigration and just how much these issues are connected. Um, you know, immigration or, you know, any other issue doesn't exist in isolation. They're all tied together. Um, and so, especially when it comes to Latin America, that's in the islands, that those are one of the places that are hit the hardest by increases in climate change. And that's where we have the biggest numbers of migrants coming from, especially recently. Beyond economic factors, we have these ecological factors that are kind of working hand in hand and fueling one another. Um, so, and again, the United States is one of the biggest contributors to climate change. So we are fueling the issue and it's just coming back to us. Um, so, you know, it's all connected. Um, so I've talked about all the problems, I've talked about all the things that we've done wrong. Um, and I wanna talk about how through my nonprofit, I've tried to kind of address some of these um, and at least address some parts of it. So kind of what I'm trying to do, um, what we're hoping to do is to change the narrative, to reframe history and to humanize immigrants. And we're gonna do all of that through public art, through imagery and through language. So when I first started doing this, I tried to connect with people, you know, through the standard method of presentations and giving people stats and statistics about X, Y, Z and why immigrants are great and why we can't just kick them out. Um, but it didn't really work. You know, people doze off, they don't pay attention, they're just numbers, it doesn't feel real. Um, and it didn't really seem to connect with anyone in a real way, especially because I was trying to target um, kind of high school youth and get them pumped up about DACA um, and all of that. And we signed petitions and that was definitely a valuable experience. Um, but I realized that stats and numbers aren't the best way to persuade human beings. Um, and so then I turned to kind of one of my biggest passions, which was art. So I started kind of creating this visual, these, these visuals, which I thought, you know, could reach people in a better way. So here we have the one on the left, where we have a combination of kind of imagery and language working together. So you have kind of the top one, which is immigrants, which is, you know, how people are, you know, it's just that one label granted to human beings. And then as you come down, you go more and more into general concepts and ideas um, to kind of point out that that one status is only, you know, a tiny part of the identity of these people that we're talking about. Um, and then at the bottom, you have a call to action. Um, and then, you know, the following images are kind of using faces because I think those are some of the most powerful ways to compel people. Um, and then, you know, words in faces and all of that kind of tying that together and kind of asking people to stop and to, you know, take a better look. Because I think at first glance, you might not notice those words, but if you do, you'll start kind of being drawn in and spending more time with the image. So these are just all of these ways which I was experimenting with um, to get people to pay attention and to keep paying attention and also to be persuaded and kind of touched emotionally. So this is um, kind of what accumulated into this one mural project, which I called the dreamer. Um, and, you know, I wanted to create an image which kind of put all these ideas together to talk about how immigrants are not a monolith, which is why kind of her face here is broken down into all of these different skin tones. Um, you know, we have her flowing hair, so it's so colorful, it's so bright, there's nothing, nothing negative about it. You know, we're not talking about immigrants as illegals or as rapists or, you know, as any of those negative things. We're talking, we're pulling out the beauty in this human phenomenon. Um, then, of course, we have the monarch butterflies, which are just beautiful. And also, um, 
so many people have associations with this butterfly. You know, someone that might represent a loved one for them. It might represent chasing their dreams, um, you know, finding your wings, all of these things. So, you know, to use this symbol and to turn it into a symbol of immigration um, puts a very beautiful face on something that has been so kind of demonized and criminalized. Um, and then you have the community piece and you have all of these people coming together to make this image come to life, which means you have a level of investment coming from people in your community. So when they walk past this mural, they can say, I contributed to this. This is where I put my paint stroke. Um, and this, is, this belongs to me as much as it belongs to anyone else. Um, so you suddenly have all of these pieces kind of coming together and you're forming community, you're reframing history, um, kind of reclaiming your narrative and telling your own story. Um, and luckily it was picked up by the press and um, that's when I think, you know, the project really took off. Before this, I didn't have a name for what I was doing. I was just kind of messing around trying to, um, you know, get people to care. But I think people resonated with this one symbol so much that I just named my organization after it. Um, and it went from there. So um, what we did was um, I had all these extra little monarchs that I had cut out because we had too many volunteers and I wanted to keep them busy. So I just had them paint monarch butterflies on the side. Um, but they were on the special material that could be pasted onto walls. So. Um, you know, we took these monarch butterflies and we started installing them around Sonoma County. Um, but I think out of context, they didn't make a lot of sense. So what I did was I put little QR codes next to them. And if you were to scan that QR code, it would take you to this map of all of the monarch butterflies around the area. Um, and within the wings of all these butterflies, there were all these words that were, I thought were relevant to immigration. Um, and I thought they were meaningful. So, um, you know, people could see this image, they could read the words, and if they were more interested, they could click, they could, you know, scan the QR code and be taken to this map of all the butterflies and also a link to our website. Um, so, you know, it's a way to connect people, put all these butterflies together. And of course, there's layers of symbolism um, coming into that as well. Um, and at some point, we actually had each of these butterflies represent a real immigrant story. So if you were to click on your specific butterfly on the map, it would give you a story of a real immigrant in Sonoma County. And you, and you got to read um, who they were, what their lives were all about. Um, and so you got all these levels of humanization and connection. And um, there is a link to this as well. If it can be dropped in the chat, you guys can see the map and, you know, read through these stories. We have a lot more now. I have to just update the website. So, you know, check back in soon. So after this took place, I just want to kind of give you guys a, you know, a rundown of all the projects we've done so far around Sonoma County. Um, you know, we had the Black Lives Matter protests, um, the killing of George Floyd, and there was a need for more public art around social justice issues. Um, and so the Monarch Project kind of started to broaden its scope in terms of the kind of work that we were doing and the messages we were putting out there. And so I applied the same principles when it came to humanizing immigrants to humanizing all human beings. Um, and we had this project, which is um, on 4th Street in downtown Santa Rosa. You guys are welcome to check it out. Um, there are these giant tapestries, tapestries um, on the street. And each of them represent a history of a different minority group in Sonoma County, starting from the center, um, kind of going out to its modern day representation. Um, so, um, and there was explanations for all of these symbols on our Instagram. Um, you guys can check that out and just scroll through. It's gonna be in one of those posts. Um, and with, with each of these projects, you know, we brought volunteers in and all of that. So, you know, we're continuing that same model from the very first mural. Um, and then we have this one as well. And this is where I started to talk about, you know, real human beings in a different ways. So all of these three women um, are women from Sonoma County who are contributing to our, you know, our community in some shape or form. Um, Rosie Hammock on the left is a Native American leader. Um, Joy Ayadeli in the center, she led the Black Lives Matter protests and she was just 18 years old and she got together 5,000 people in a week. Um, so she's very incredible and she's continuing her work through her nonprofit, What We Are Fighting For. Also check out their Instagram. Um, and then on the very right, we have Bernice Espinoza, who was a public defender and an immigration lawyer. 
and um, her work was the kind that was really unnoticed, but we got to kind of highlight it through this mural and depict her as the hero that she is. Um, and so I want to talk here a little bit more about imagery and how that can affect people. So um, I think I'm imagining like, you know, young children, young girls, especially looking at this image and just feeling empowered by seeing themselves represented, um, you know, depicted as almost royalty or just very powerful imagery, um, you know, in public art. Each of these pieces are like 13, 15 feet tall. Um, so you can just kind of stand there and look up you know, at, you know, the power that you yourself hold. Um, so there's all of these layers working together. Um, and, you know, this was the project that we did last summer. Now it's at um, the downtown mall above Forever 21. So you guys can check that out as well. And this is, um, this is at Roseland right now. And this was a reference to kind of child separation at the border. Um, and the sacredness of motherhood and all, and all of that means. Um, and we're gonna have an opening for this mural um, on April 25th. Um, at, it's on, I think, 665 Sebastopol Road or by the Matote Food Park. Um, I'll have a flyer for that at the very end of this presentation. So you guys are all welcome to come. Um, there'll be food, music, all of that fun stuff um, and some painting opportunities as well, just for fun. Um, and then I'll skim over this just so I can move on to the workshop. Um, but we also have an online store where people can, you know, help us spread this imagery. There's stickers, t-shirts, posters, um, all of that. And you guys can order that. Um, and, you know, kind of helping get that imagery even further out there beyond just my own reach. So having these stickers and posters up around the community um, in your own homes and your Zoom backgrounds, all of that. Just the more repetition you have of imagery, the stronger it's going to be. And then before I move on to the workshop, I just wanna give you guys, give a shout out to some other really cool artists that are working on the theme of immigration. Fabiana Rodriguez, which I mentioned earlier, um, she's amazing. And then also Shepard Ferry, also known as Obey Giant, um, which are also, you know, pretty cool. And I'm, they're very much, you know, inspired me a lot to do my work. So. If you're interested in this general theme of immigration and art, I would highly recommend checking them out. There's hundreds more, um, but these are just a couple. And there's future projects going on, but those are also on the Instagram. This was actually going to be at Sonoma State University, the one on the left, um, but unfortunately the administration shut that down. I'm not gonna get too much into it, not happy about it, but, um, uh, this was going to go at Sonoma State. Now it's going to be in the, at the Petaluma Bounty Farm. Um, and we'll have an opening for that soon as well. And this project, this one is going to be at Sonoma Originals, which is a skate shop in Sonoma. Um, so just be on the lookout for that. They'll be coming together this summer. And this is the flyer for the event I was telling you guys about. So, you know, if, you, if you're interested, take a picture of this. Um, April 25th, 4 p.m. And everyone is welcome. Okay, um, I think it's time for the workshop. Um, there is a video of everything that I'm gonna do here. So if you wanna watch it again at some point, you're welcome to. For some questions? Yes, of course. Before we get started? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was there any questions in the chat, Izel? No, there was just Does anyone have any questions that we can just take a moment here to pause and before uh, we get on to our next section? Diana made a comment at the very beginning that uh, there isn't any questions currently other than the one that you just posted. Can we go ahead and ask that one then? Yours? Yeah. Okay. So what are your upcoming events online that, that you have going? Online or just in general? Or in general. Uh, and how can someone, you know, sign up to volunteer and where, where do we sign up for that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll go back to, there's the opening, which is technically an event. Um, you know, there'll be butterfly painting going on there, but like a lot bigger. So you're welcome to come for that um, and see the mural and meet me in person. Love to meet you. Um, and then for both of these projects, we're going to need volunteers to come help. Um, for the Petaluma Bounty one, um, we'll be painting tomorrow and Saturday at the Petaluma Bounty. Um, more specific information is on the Instagram. 
Um, so, you know, feel free to check that out. If you don't have Instagram, just email me and I can send you all of that. Um, my email is socoimmigrants at gmail.com. So socoimmigrants at gmail.com. Um, email me and I'm happy to give you any information that you might, that you might like. Um, and same goes for the Sonoma Originals one that'll be posted on the Instagram. Um, but if you want to be, you know, kind of in my list of people to send information through through email again, just let me know. Um, and I'll, you know, update you guys through there. So those are the two main ones coming up right now. As we have other ones coming up, they'll just be, you know, through our social medias. So um, forgive me. So if somebody wants to volunteer, would they would they be able to sign up through your Instagram? You can just show up. Just show up. Okay. <laughs> Everyone is welcome. Yeah. Show up. Come on in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Any other questions before we move on to our next activity? No. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Carry on. Thank you. Great. Um, so I want to give you guys a moment to just collect a couple of things. Just any piece of paper will work. Um, and then, you know, pencils. Or if you have, you know, pens, especially like a black Sharpie of some kind, that'll be super helpful. Um, and then if you happen to have paint lying around and some paintbrushes, um, just grab some orange paint. And um, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to get all of that. And then we'll get started. I'm basically going to take you guys through um, painting a monarch butterfly, um, kind of in the style of the monarch project. And um, at the end, we're also going to be filling in kind of words that are related to immigration um, and migration and also just your personal goals and aspirations. Um, yeah, um, I guess we can start in at like 4.43, something like that. Um, and if you guys need more time, just kind of put it in the chat or let me know. Um, and, you know, we can wait for you. Okay, um, let's get started. So I really can't see any of you right now. So if you wanna tell me something, just kind of unmute yourself and shout it out. I um, uh, hope everyone is ready. Okay, cool, I see a thumbs up. Um, so we're gonna start with just find the center of your page and we're gonna draw like the little body from which the wings are gonna come off of. Um, and you know, you can make it any shape that you like. I like to go for something like this, like a little head. You can add antenna if you like. And at any point, you know, I'm just giving you guys kind of suggestions in my general style, but there's no rules here. Um, you know, you can do this however you like. Um, the next step is going to be kind of adding the wings in. And so if you can just mark kind of lines coming this way and that way. Um, the top wings will go here and then we'll have some bottom wings in there. So uh, a nice easy way to get those bottom wings in is to just draw a circle 
um, almost the size of the body. I know that feels kind of big. Um, you're gonna do something like that. And then you're just gonna trace around it with your pencil. So we have our circle in and trace around it. And we're just gonna add a little bit of shape to it just to make it seem more interesting. And then you're gonna make this curve kind of coming up like this and coming into the body. So the first step you definitely want to do in pencil um, because we're gonna do, be doing a lot of erasing and then going over in pen. And then you can do kind of a similar thing. And then I'm just adding kind of all kinds of little shapes to this and that's completely up to you for what you wanna add, how abstract you wanna make it. Um, I also wanna note that this isn't gonna be a an anatomically correct butterfly. Um, it's just kind of my interpretation of it. Add something like that. Okay. Um, for the top one, you're just going to take a line, kind of making like a V shape coming out from the top. You can imagine that's one side, and then that's the other. This. And then um, we're gonna add another big circle here, kind of underneath that V. Um, that's gonna be around the size. And you wanna go just really lightly with these circles because they're gonna be kind of falling behind and underneath all of this. We're gonna add some circles here. And then you're gonna take, um, add another smaller one here. And these are just gonna be guides for us when we're adding these shapes in. And you want this to be as symmetrical as possible um, if you can. Then we're going to take our pencil and we're just going to kind of hug um, the circle as much as we can until we kind of come up to around here. Then we're going to lift up and kind of get this kind of concavity here. Circle around, hug this one. And then um, we're going to make kind of like a pointy-ish tip. Now I'm kind of adjusting as I'm doing this. You do the same thing. I'm going to hug the circle, lift off, hug the other one. Kind of create this shape. And then I'm just going to make some adjustments, add some more like little, these little lines in here because they give them some more character. Um, and you can, you know, make those adjustments however you like. It, it is your butterfly. Are we good here? Can I get like thumbs up um, if you're cut up and then like a thumbs down um, if you are not or, you know, any other sign of distress? <laughs> oh, Diana, can you hold that up again? Let me move my camera. Beautiful. Thank you. If anyone else wants to show off their butterflies, now is a great time. Um, if not, we're going to continue. Let me turn my butterfly around and take a look at it. Okay. I'm doing this upside down, by the way. So excuse me if I have any <laughs> mistakes or errors. Um, and then I'm just going to clean up the edges and make sure that, you know, I'm creating the symmetry that I want. What other shapes I want. Okay. Now we're going to add kind of the inner designs for the butterflies. Um, if the circle that we made up top, we're going to trace it again, this time, you know, making sure that it's more obvious. And then we're just going to make like a little outline around here like this. So we're going to hug it and then curve a little into it. Um, and this is going to kind of mark off that black space where you see a lot of white dots in the monarch butterfly. We're going to do the same thing here. And then we're gonna go from the center and we're gonna start adding the wing patterns. So I like to start with one really big one, kind of coming in through the top. And you can do one wing at a time, but I think if you wanna go for symmetry, it's easier to do one side than the other and then switch off a lot. Um, gonna add another center piece here. And 
and then just work your way out. You can add whatever, whatever shapes you like. You can add hearts, um, circles, you know, whatever you like. Do the same thing here. And then I like to kind of round my edges um, once I'm done to kind of make them blend into that space. Okay, and then we're just gonna add in the little dots here. They don't have to be dots, just like these shapes around the edges, these circles. Okay, there we go. Um, can I get a show of hands for, or just any kind of signal, if you have paint um, or anything to fill in or to color right now? Um, just a thumbs up would be fine. Okay, I learned the confetti. Okay, great. Um, so I'm gonna be using some just acrylic paint, but you can do this with marker, anything you like. Um, and we're just going to fill in um, the inner parts of the wings. Um, and so just take your time, fill these in. If you're going with paint, um, I would recommend just doing a really light layer because for the sake of time for it to dry, I wanna make sure it can do that. And it's totally fine to go outside the lines because we're going to come back with um, some black marker or Sharpie or anything like that um, at the very end and kind of pull all of this together. Okay, almost done. And while you're doing this, um, start thinking about some words that you might want to add into the butterfly's wings. And I'll kind of demonstrate um, how I do that typically. Um, and they can also be words that, you know, either they're about immigration, what you think defines the issue, what you think is important, um, or if you are an immigrant yourselves, kind of what defines your experience and all of that. Um, or you can take this in a very different way um, because one of the big takeaways that I want from this presentation is that immigration is ultimately just a human experience. So kind of what are your dreams and aspirations um, and all of that, we're gonna put them in here. Um, these are the wings that are gonna give you the power to chase those dreams and you know, get what you want out of your life. Um, so there we go. If you have a paintbrush, make sure to put it in some water. Um, and then next you can do this either with pencil, let me check if this is dry, great. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna turn this right side up so it'll be upside down for you, um, just so I can add in some of these words. So let's see if this is gonna be what I want it to do, yeah. Um, so um, I think one of the first words that I typically add in is the word dream. Um, 
because I think that's one of the driving factors behind this, behind immigration. Um, and you just kind of want to fold your words into the butterfly wings. So think about the way the butterfly patterns are flowing. So you can see there's all kinds of like these rounded shapes and they're all kind of blending together. So I like to have my letters kind of mimic that style and that's kind of what makes them blend into the design. So let's do something like that. And I'll come back and get that kind of slightly wetter spot. Um, and then if anyone wants to have some suggestions from what I can add, please put them in the chat. And if someone can kind of read them out for me, that would be great um, at any point if you have any ideas. And then I also like to add unity. So I'm gonna put that here. And then hope, of course, is a really big one. Diana Grant suggested adding immigrants equal America. Okay, great. Um, we can put immigrants here and then America here because those are a little longer words, but I love that. Let's try. Okay. Um, and you guys can continue to fill in these wings for the interest of time. Um, I'm going to start filling in these outlines so you know how to do that. And then you can continue to fill in those words, um, you know, independently. Let's get it. And a marker. Um, and so you just want to follow your pencil lines. I would probably do these center lines first. Um, just trace them, make them nice and bold so they're more visible. And this is where you want to be more careful um, to make sure you get the lines that you want because you can't erase it like pencil. I'll turn this back up so that. An antenna here, get these edges. And I am moving fairly quickly here. Um, so of course you'll be able to see the recording later, but there is also um, a video on YouTube um, and that is in the presentation I can I can put the link at the very end so you can also watch that video if you're interested. It's very similar to what I'm doing here, but with some more details. Um, yeah. Okay, and then the last thing that I'm going to do is just fill in all of these, all of the black spaces. Um, and you know, you can do that with a marker, or if you have paint, that'll also work. I 
actually going to grab my black paint. I'll be back in just one second. Did you have a blog or a podcast as well? Um, we do have a blog in the making. It's currently in its production phase, um, but you know it'll be released on our website whenever it's ready. There's a prototype kind of version on Spotify. It's called One Nation Together. Um, and there are some pretty cool conversations on there right now. It's hosted by Aiden Kashani and Arav Duby, who are um, currently seniors in high school, but they interview all kinds of really cool people from around Sonoma County. Um, so, you know, you're totally welcome to check that out as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you. This is, this is a great, um, a great workshop of, of showing us how to do this and um, I'm glad it's recorded. We can go back and <laughs> rewatch it for some of us that are a little bit slow on the artistic I'm just, yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> moving quickly here just so everyone can get a sense of the steps. But um, yeah, definitely this is a very, you know, meditative process. So you can take your time and spend hours painting your butterfly. I know I think we're probably over time. So um, if people want to head out, I understand I will be finishing this up very quickly. Does anyone have any any questions while we're while we're wrapping this up? Um, any questions, feedback, comments for our, our, our guest speaker? I I put in the chat. Um, this is Diana. That I because I can only see you, Jane, and I gotta fix my screen here. I think go back to gallery view. That I second all the comments, but that um, I also wonder. Um, this is for Rima specifically. Have you talked to the, you know, the monarch? This may sound obvious. Have you talked to the monarch butterfly, save the butterfly people? So that maybe a, a productive consultation and collaboration there. That's that's a great point. Um, I mean, monarch actually, saving people is what you're yes. doing. <laughs> um, we're actually planning on doing a milkweed planting um, sometime soon. Hopefully, we're gonna we're gonna see when the prime time is for that. Um, because you are right that monarch butterflies are endangered, mostly because we're killing the milkweed. Um, so I have not spoken to that organization, um, but I will be doing that so we can kind of make a collaboration um, and kind of go even more into that kind of ecological aspect. Um, I, I thought, I assume maybe that you, you have already thought about it, that's what I mean, because it just could be very good for your fledgling nonprofit. And, you know, they've been around for loads of years so <laughs> right thank you that, that's... and it could help both but you know especially yours because you're the newer one right so and wow can you draw monarchs i confess that i, I somehow always make mine into swallowtails because i can't really draw very well and draw butterflies <laughs> but mine is a swallowtail and i know monarchs are not swallowtails but i just <laughs> i just it's there i love it it's beautiful it's a Thank monarch. You. It's a wannabe swallowtail. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad to know that you're thinking of them because because uh, getting your message out is important. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I think that that is it for now. Um, so thank you everyone for your time. Everyone who participated. Um, if you'd like me to see these, and I would love to, you can either email them to me or you can post them on social media with the hashtag, hashtag SoCo Monarch Project. I'll see them that way as well. So. All right. Um, people, before you guys leave or participants, if you guys could uh, take a chance and uh, fill out our survey forms, it'd be great. Uh, you guys would help us out a lot. I'm going to drop it in the chat right now. It's um, it's for you know the purposes of continuing social justice week. Uh, we receive funding through the schools uh, programs that require us to provide them information of uh, attendees and and stuff. You know, just to keep the 
program going. So yeah, that'd be great if you guys could take a chance, uh, time out of your day and do that. All right, thank you so much. Let's give our, our guest um, a big round of applause, Rima. Thank you so much for being here. Um, it's You're doing beautiful work and, and we're just, we really appreciate um, everything you're doing for the community and uh, for your cause. So thank you so much. Um, I will send you an email on um, what we what we discussed so that you can, uh, well, I'll take it offline, but I'll send you an email uh, with that form. So again, thank you everyone for, for being here and uh, have a beautiful day. Bye everyone, thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you.